And welcome in to MBR Radio's presentation of high school basketball. Brought to you by DVM Sports and OnDemandSportingEvents.com. We shoot you score. I also want to thank our other sponsors, Berlin City Toyota. And, of course, McHugh Law. McHugh Law, a name you can trust. McHugh Law, one of our longtime sponsors. Matt Boutwell, Tom Nolette with you here. Zach Gilpin and Andrew Fleming are about to tip it off. Tip is won by Oxford Hills, and we are underway. And we already have a traveling call. Welcome to East of Maine basketball. <laughs> Welcome up the pike. Starters for the teams today, as you can see on the video. Matt Boshane, Ty Ripley, Dalton Rice, Luke Davidson, Andrew Fleming for Oxford Hills. Nick Gilpin, Cam Scott, Brendan McIntyre, Zach Gilpin, Isaiah Bess. For the undefeated Hamden Academy Broncos, 37 in a row right now for Hamden Academy. Well, they are the class of the class in the state right now, and there's one of the key players right there was Gilpin with a strong move, but Fleming was there to make deflect that one, but kind of throws it away in transition. What a good, can't waste any possessions against Hamden Academy. You've already had two turnovers. Well, you say, how can you compete and how can you beat this team? You really have to play flawless basketball, and turnovers is where it all starts. Best for three, no good. Rebound fought for, and Rice is going to save it one-handed. The athleticism of Dalton Rice saved it there, and Matt Boshan is going to get it over the timeline for the Oxford Hills Vikings. Well, Oxford Hills comes in at 10-5, and five, and really it's about uh, how they play competitively. Fleming's jumper's no good. Looked good. Good looking shot, squared up, 15 footer. All right there, Nick Gilpin showing why he's one of the super softs, up and in with a left hand. 2 0 Hamden Academy. Yeah, Nick can do it on both ends of the court. The younger brother of Zach, only a sophomore, as you mentioned, and we know he has, he's used to the, the limelight as he had that huge shot last year against Lawrence to get him they to get the finals. Get to Fleming in the high post. Davidson in the corner, three, splash! And if you haven't seen Oxford Hills play, the front line is key. Davison, Rice, and Fleming will score about 75 to 80% of the points. Gilpin gets caught up in the air, kicks it out, and now Bess with it. Being guarded by Rice. That's a tough one. Bess around, up, and in. Bo Shane's had pretty good position on the take. He's down. He's hurt a little bit, but there was no call. Pretty good no call, really, as Prob he was so deep. Probably a little too far under the basket to draw that one. 4-3. Hamden Academy with the lead. O'Shane awaiting for a screen. Doesn't get it. Instead, he's going to swing it off to Ripley. Ripley picks up the dribble, gets it over to Boshane. Fleming being guarded by Bess. Cut off. Swings it over to the other side. Davidson back up top, Ripley. Interesting matchup defensively with Bess on Fleming. Boshane gets stripped going into the lane. Very and quick hands. McIntyre gets it over to Gilpin. Gilpin drives in, off the glass, and in. 6-3, Hamden Academy. Zach comes into this game, only 56 points to reach that, thousand, that magical 1,000-point plateau. Looking to try and get it today, possibly. I hope not. <laughs> For <laughs> Dr. Hill perspective. Davidson on the, on the block, no good, short hook shot. And right now the difference... No offensive rebounds right now for Oxford Hills. Yeah, one and done. They're worried about getting back in transition. I think you need to focus more on the offensive end. Get that rebound and score rather than giving up the trans the, uh, the possession. Best fires, no good. Fleming down with the rebound. Swings it to Ripley. Ripley into the paint. Pull up. Up and good. The talented Mr. Ripley makes it 6-5, to five, Hamden Academy. Well, it's good to see Ty get involved early. He hasn't been a real offensive threat. He's been more of a defensive kind of kid, so that's a good play to get him involved. Nice pass down low, and you're going to get a foul call there. Could be in. It's the hack. Yeah, I thought the block from behind was right on target. Free throw is good for McIntyre. McIntyre, another one of Stella sophomore class here at Hamden Academy. He's averaged double figures for the for the season for them. It's pretty wild, Tom, when you look at that roster. It's sophomores and seniors. No juniors, no freshmen. Yeah. But they have a couple of the best seniors in the state, a couple of the best sophomores in the state here. Fleming pass intended for Rice, went off of Rice's shins. Rice jumped up and Fleming passed down. Yeah, threw the hot fastball low. Probably a good thing. Uh, it's, it might have saved Rice. They might have saved the turnover. Might have saved future Rices as well. <laughs> Meanwhile, Cam Scott, drill drive. Kicks it out. Nick Gilpin, crossover. Drives in. Good job by Maddie to stay in front. Maddie cannot get another foul here, or Oxford Hills gets in trouble. Gilpin 
gets called for the travel. Well, I've talked to some people before the game. They say, well, it seems like Oxford Hills is up and down with their play, and it's true. They are, and one of the big factors is they're not overly deep, and any foul trouble to what I call the big four uh, is, is a key factor for this team. Couldn't agree more. Boshin kicks it out. Davidson. Davidson fires away. Bang! That's the second three-pointer of the game for Luke Davidson. Luke Davidson bought, brought his three ball with him up the pike, and it's 8-7, to seven, Oxford Hills. And as he's progressed as a player, he's really extended his game, really having a big year for Oxford Hills. Fleming guarding Gilpin. Now Scott. Scott with a crossover. Goes up against Davidson. Can't finish. Ripley has it picked off by Gilpin. Gilpin lays it up. No good. Gets the offensive rebound. Up and in. Zach Gilpin showing why he is the main man in member of this defending state championship Hamden Academy team, 9-8 Hamden Academy. That's a good call. It's a Bardian uh, up front, Mac Beauchene, they called a foul on Zach Gilpin, uh, Nick Gilpin. Chickering's going to come into the ball game for Ripley. Quick move in first quarter, Matt. Don't jinx it, Tommy. <laughs> we know the rules. Well, the third team on the floor today, we have a two-man crew, as you can see, and uh, we like the two-man crew at the high school level. Big fan of the two-man crew. Too much. Oh. Little mustard there. Meanwhile, Fleming with the interception. Picks it off. Now looking to get it down low for Rice and cannot connect. You can't be casual with the, with the ball. Sometimes that's what... Uh, Andrew does. He's such a good player and can really pass the ball well. Sometimes he gets a little casual and that time just kind of flicked it too far ahead of his uh, play, his teammate. I like to say that as Dalton Rice go, the Oxford Hills Vikings go. Dalton Rice has a lot of points. Good chance they're going to be in this ball game for a while. If he doesn't, might not be. Yeah, you've really got to get a lot of production out of the big three and he's a big part of that. Gilpin shakes, bakes, get in, gets into the lane. Down low, he gets it again, gets Fleming up in the air, lays it up and in. Fleming does a good job not drawing the foul, but Gilpin gets another two points. Well, ball movement is the hallmark of this unselfish Hamden Academy team, and they break down the defenses very well that way. 11-8, Hamden Academy with the lead. Checkering up top, dribbles with the left hand, gets it over to Beauchene. Beauchene over on the sideline. Best guarding Fleming. Now Fleming into the low block, turns, goes up and draws the foul. Well, that's a good way to, to uh, get to the free throw line as he turned into Isaiah Best and Isaiah Best got some body. Isaiah Best comes in from Penquist. Just nominated for the All McDonald's All-American game. Fleming's first free throw is good, 11 to nine now. Hamden Academy's lead down to two. 2.34 remaining in the first quarter. Welcome to those of you joining us on the video stream today. If you're joining us on the uh, TuneIn Radio app on WLXO, welcome in as well. Both free throws, 11 to 10. Andrew Fleming on the board with two points. Well, I like the I like the way uh, Oxford Hills is approaching the early part of this game. They're not intimidated by the play. They're they're really uh, playing solid man-to-man -man defense. Ripley Gilpin straight elbow three, no good rebound. Comes down to Davidson. But we may want to keep an eye on where uh, Zach Gilpin is. Fleming saves it, and foot got tapped what? there. There's no way. It, <laughs> I mean, we have video on that one, so maybe I'm wrong, but I, I think he got. The, I think the official got the yellow line and the purple line mixed up. Don't you, did you see it? it? It was pretty close. And you know what the problem is? Andrew's feet are gigantic. Yeah, the yes size 34s. Yeah, Shaquille no, O'Neal. Shaquille O'Neal feet. Bess on the outside, dribbles with the left hand, being guarded by Ripley. Ripley's a very good on-ball defender. This is going to be a good matchup. Meanwhile, Beauchene down low gets caught guarding Matt Martin. And Martin takes advantage, turnaround, 13 to 10. Last time we saw Martin was on the uh, baseball diamond. That's right. Tap out there. Davidson taps it out to Beauchene, who saves it. And the ref does double check on the lines. He did. <laughs> Chickering in the corner. Gets it to Davidson, down low, turnaround, hook. Going to get the That's foul called call. there. I like that. They're recognizing the matchups, and Davidson is has an advantage on Cam Scott. Cam Scott's a terrific defender, but he is also a guard and has a couple inches Davidson does on him. So getting him and the opportunity down that low block is a pretty good decision by Oxford Hills. Yeah. 
First free throw is no good. Second is good. 13 to 11, Oxford Hills trails by two. That's seven points for Luke early in this one. Scott into the corner. The elder Gilpin. Chickren guarding Gilpin. Gilpin drives in, can't finish, but finishes up in the left hand, cleans up the mess. And that's where he separates himself from the rest. He's a quick jumper, and on the miss, he's right back at it with a tap in. That's four points for Gilpin now off of offensive rebounds. Boshane into the corner for Davidson. High, low, Fleming. Fleming went off the hand and couldn't get it. And then you're going to get a frustration foul called there he was, as he was trying to get the ball back. Well, Big Red trying to settle down and get into this one. I like it when he gets aggressive to, to the basket. We need to see more of that out of him tonight. One minute remaining in the first quarter, 15 to 11. Hamden Academy leads Oxford Hills. Jake Black into the ball game for Hamden. Come on, Ty. Looking for Martin. Best gets it. Rice is going to go in on Gilpin. Rice goes for the block. Gilpin once again, offensive rebound with the left hand. That's six points off offensive rebound, 17 to 11. He's very strong, and it, you need more help on the weak side on the boards. Good screen there from Rice. Little miscommunication. You get a turnover. Yeah, with too many turnovers will create a lot of separation quick. And that'll happen as well as Zach Gilpin doesn't need the offensive rebound there. Three ball, 20 to 11, just like that. Well, that's 13 for Zach. He leads, uh, he leads Oxford Hills by two so far in this one. Maddie got drilled, no call, and back the other way comes Martin. I like the no call. Uh, Maddie really initiated the, op the offense and the contact. He has a tendency to do that. Gilpin goes baseline, spin, off the glass, no good. End of one quarter of play, 20 to 11, Hamden Academy. Just like that, the two point deficit is up to nine. Sponsoring the audio portion of today's broadcast, McHugh Law, a name you can trust. Start it off here. Cam Scott, couple of dribbles, swings it over to Bess. Bess up at the top of the key. It's a nice backdoor play. Gilpin catches it and releases it, 22 to 11. No look into the corner for Morton. Quick catch, release, no good. And the rebound's going to be back the other way. Yeah, those are good shots, but you've got to make them. Otherwise, you're going to create an easy transition for Hamden. Scott for three, no good. Fleming comes down to the board. Morton into the ball game. Morton, Rice, Chickering, Fleming, and Ripley in there for Oxford Hills. I think you really want to try to get Fleming and Rice involved now. I would agree. Chickering, dribbles, left hand into the paint, going to get called for steps. Yeah, the thing sometimes you tend to do is you try to press a little bit, pressure too much, trying to make something happen, press, press when it's not there. Be patient, open up the floor, create some space, and then, then go back inside to, to uh, Fleming or Davis or Rice. Looking to hand it off to Bass. Ripley doing a good job defensively. Fleming on Gilpin now. Goes around. Rice and Fleming go up. Can't quite, Gilpin can't get the finish. Well, one thing we need to recognize is that the officials are letting them play. So put a body on someone and get physical out there. Right that time, Martin went over him defensively and no, no call. Meanwhile, Rice getting the groove, 22 to 13. And we know Lice, Rice and Davidson like to get physical, so let's get it on. Play Pick up basketball. the tempo. Don't play. Don't let them control tempo. That's right now. We're kind of letting off uh, hand. In. What do you want to do, hand? And you lead. We'll follow. Right. Oxford Hills needs to say no. Oxford Hills needs to lead. Cam Scott gets called for a carry there. I believe that's the first carry I've seen all year, Tom. And I've seen some crazy calls this year. <laughs> <laughs> I like this crew so far. Not to jinx anything. The officiating crew. Boshane over to Rice. Down low, Fleming up and in. Kind of running a four out, one in, trying to ISO Fleming, and that time it worked for Big Red. 22-15, uh, Hamden Academy with the lead. Martin, give and go. Morton with a good reach and foul there on Black to not give up the easy layup. Black will go to the line to shoot two. 6.08 remaining in the first half. Well, we've had the opportunity to see Hamden Academy a lot over the years. We've uh, spent a few years ago a lot of games up here, and then we've yes. seen them. <laughs> We've seen them in uh, championship form, and they are a very unselfish, fundamentally sound team, and that little give-and-go backdoor cut is a big part of what they try to do. Coach Bartlett does a pretty good job of uh, getting everybody to buy into what he wants to do. Stu two straight appearances in the uh, Class A title game. There are one and one in those. 
Black's second free throw good, 23-15. A uh, little piece of trivia. Last two times these teams met was uh, nine years ago, 2005, in the Eastern Maine semis. Wow, that's way back in the day. I think uh, that was the uh, Jordan Cook team, and uh, they won the States that year. Hamden did. Fleming three ball, no good. Davidson can't get the finish, but does get the foul. Draws it on Scott. Good ball fake from Davidson. And the other thing he did real well was positioning defense on the rebounding action. He knew that Andrew was going to shoot that, so he got weak side, low block, and was right there for the miss. Davidson's first free throw is good, 23-16. For Oxford Hills here, there's no seven-point play. All you can do is try to make stops on the other end, hold them to a one-and-done, and more importantly, make your free throws when you get those chances. Davidson hits both, 23-17. Well, Hamden has another gear we haven't seen yet defensively as well, so you want to try to get in the rhythm. Morton tries to draw a foul, doesn't, and you're going to get Bo Shane on the reach-in down here. You got a new section, Tom. Yeah. We are Oxford Hills, by the <laughs> way. <laughs> now you're going to get an off the ball call, foul called. And now it starts to get fun. Yeah. <laughs> we'll make you feel like guests for a little while. <laughs> make you feel cozy. Inbounder to Gilpin on the baseline. Shot around the rim, no good. Rebound, Davidson. Strong rebound by Davidson. You really, you know, the officials are letting him play inside, so you need to put a body on someone. Morton, Fleming, Fleming pull up, hits it. Usually he who hesitates is lost, but he found his way there, 23 to 19. And I thought he almost lost the, the handle when he was going up to shoot it, so somehow he was able to make that one fall. I was waiting for them to call the steps. There's a little bit of hesitation, and Andrew, just, you know, good basketball player, sometimes tends to make it look awkward. And he's got to be careful. Morton. Oh. There so, and there you go. That's called politicking right there. Yeah, that, that's the uh, proverbial makeup for anyone who's wondering <laughs> what side of the fence we're on. It's, uh, <laughs> that was the makeup call right there. Goodness gracious. So it all evens out in the end. Well, give that one to Coach Grafham. Yeah, that was Coach Grafham politicking the official. But I like it. The players kept their mouth shut, let the coach work the, with the officials, and that's the way to do it. Lots of good kids on the floor here. Yeah. W is, is, people know we cover Oxford Hills for OXO, but we're huge Hamden Academy fans as well. Bass with a good rebound there. Nice shot from Ben Morton. Bass drives up, and Morton could just stay out of the way. He took a shot. Well, know. Pretty sure I know where that shot was taken. It, yeah, there's a little something funny about that play, though, when the player goes up with his feet out. Yeah, but that's a, you know, that's an old school. I used to do that when I had no, you know, no, uh, no <laughs> chance. Option? Like, I'm just going to stick my leg out, and they'd call it every time. That's how it goes. <laughs> Smart move. Pass gets a free throw, 24-19. Isaiah has been a little quiet, but he's a very talented young man. Already has a Division II scholarship in his back pocket. Caleb Philibrown into the ball game. Philibrown hit a three the other night against Skowhegan. Free throw, no good. Rebound, Davidson. Good box out from Davidson on Gilpin. That is not an easy task either. Fleming jumper. Starting to feel it. Big red, 24-21. Yeah, if the Flem dog heats up, you better look out. <laughs> He's very easy when he does that. He is. Very easy, like Berlin City Toyota. Bess. Swings it in. It's on Black. Black saves it. Gets it to Scott. Black with it again. Over to Scott. And right now, Hamden's struggling a little bit to get what they want offensively. They're going to pull it back out. I'm sure they'll find it in a minute. And they're going to get Maddie for the reach in. Wow, that was a pretty long continuation. Tough call, very tough call for Oxford Hills as Maddie will pick up his third, isn't it? We'll find out in a second. Nope. Yep, yeah, that's his third. So make a note, four minutes to play, 26-21, second quarter. 
One thing Oxfield really doesn't have a lot of depth at is at the point guard spot. No. And that's a tough one. You almost want to let Maddie let that one go there. 27-21. Did he make both of those? 11-21. Ian Hamden Academy is in the bonus. Oxford Hill's not far away from it. Get we had a lot of fun uh, watching uh, when his sons played here, Christian yes. McHugh, and uh, a couple of years back with big Fred Knight and, uh, and the gang. Got to call uh, Zach Gelpin's buzzer beater against Mount Blue, actually, at the uh, old Mount Blue... Uh, middle School. At the Mount Blue Middle School when they were doing the uh, upgrades there. That was quite a game. Only 250 people in the building, and it was a classic. And then we've done the uh, Class A States on NBI Radio the last couple of years. Absolutely. And plenty of Hamden Academy on the NBR Radio Airwaves. Also on the Airwaves of OXO last year with the uh, state game, Tom. That's right. Phillip Brown gets it over to Chickering, gets reset. Chickering takes a couple of dribbles, gets it to Davidson. Fleming being guarded by Bass, now down low to Davidson. Davidson swings it out to Chickering. Floor spacing. Floor spacing, in indeed. Rice with it now. Rice drives baseline, kicks it out, or tries to kick it to Fleming. Ends up in the hands of Davidson. Now Phillip Brown with it over to Chickering. Nothing looking easy for Oxford Hills in this set, but they haven't given up the ball yet. And, of course, as soon as I say that, the ball's all over the place. And then Fleming drives in and draws the call there. Well, well there's one. Got to hit these free throws, though. Good crowd here today, Matt. Very good crowd. And no. The ping pong did not fall through the hoop. No, it did not. Did not get the Don Nelson bounce there. <laughs> McIntyre out of the ball game. Martin back in. Fleming's second free throw is good. It's 27-22. 3-10 remaining in the first half. Matt Beltwell, Tom Nolette with you here on MBR Radio. And on the TuneIn Radio app, search WOXO. Pass is intended for Gilpin down low, but wasn't quite able to connect. Turnover, rare. Hamden Academy turnover, Oxford Hills basketball. Yeah, they haven't had many thus far. Good defense by Oxford Hills. Check ring over to Phillip Brown. Look inside. You have Davidson posting up Scott. It's there a pretty it good is. matchup. There it is. Davidson up. No good. And the rebound comes down to Martin. Good defense there on the weak side by Black. That's going to be travel. No, it was no not. call. I think Gilpin did a pretty good job there to keep that ball bouncing and not get a kick. He did. That's athleticism right there. Looked like Chickering was going to get a call for a hold. Didn't. Ball bounces off of Bess's leg right to Scott. And then Black comes up aces. 30-22 to 22 for a three-pointer. Black, another one of that real quality sophomore class here. Davidson in the corner. Rice and Fleming occupying the same spot. Now Fleming double teamed. Rice down low. Hook. No good. Rebound Martin. If you fade away, they're not going to give you the call on this one. No, I like the idea of going inside, though. It's the right decision. It is. That one goes off of Andrew's foot. Out of bounds. And this is where it changed in the first quarter. It seems like for the first six minutes of each quarter, Oxford Hills is competing. Last two minutes is where Hamden Academy is really pushing away. That's what happened in the first quarter. Oxford Hills, they want to stay in this one. they got to uh, make sure they stay with them here and keep it at least within 10. Gilpin for three. No good. Rebound Rice. And that's what good teams do. They know how to close out quarters and halves. Bass picks it away from Fleming. Checkering needs to stop. And Bass puts it down. Well, he kind of laid it up over the top, and then uh, Fleming was trying to go for the block, and he ripped the basket down. Sound like a big dunk, but. <laughs> <laughs> nice screen, no good. Martin went down, but Gilpin gets out in front of the pack over by the Oxford Hills bench. They got it by Ripley. Floater, goodness, that is so pretty. Couldn't get it to fall, but Fleming with the needle up ahead to Rice, who lays it up, and the foul is called on Martin. All kinds of action on both ends, but back to Zach Gilpin's shot. That's what separates him. He's able to go baseline strong and then jump stop and pull up and go over people where a lot of other players will plow right into him and create, you know, the player control foul. Some college coach is going to be very lucky to have Zach Gilpin on their team. Yeah, I'm really surprised he hasn't had a scholarship, much of a scholarship offer. 
He's had uh, some par a partial or two, but he's clearly a scholarship player in my mind. But he may end up going to a really good D3 school, which wouldn't be a bad decision either. Nope. So it comes right down to it. Sometimes it's about the education you get. One of two free throws for Rice, 32-23. Scott Gilpin, back to Scott. Out of bounds will remain with Hamden Academy. All the little things are still going to Hamden Academy's way, and that's what happens when, you, when you're a good team. A lot of times the breaks go your way. Sometimes you force them to go your way. Scott looking to inbound. Rice and Bess tangled up, and somehow Davidson ends up with the basketball. Yeah, I think Rice not uh, Bess off where he wanted to get to. Shickering, looking to get it down low to Davidson. Rice, backdoor cut, up and in. Nice play, good look from Davidson, good finish by Rice to get himself under control. 32-25, approaching 45 seconds remaining here in the first half. Scott swings it, miscommunication, hits Matty Beauchene on the bench. Turnover, little unforced error action there. Big possession here for Oxford Hills. Other than the uh, three fouls on the point guard, Matt Beauchene, you have to feel pretty good right now if you're Oxford Hills, the way you've been playing. But you got to end this strong or it doesn't matter. Fleming down low, finishes. 32-27. 11 now for Fleming in the first half. Nine in the second quarter. He definitely got off to a slow start, but he's picked it up. Gilpin and Fleming. Quite the matchup. I thought you might sing a little verse for us there. You're about <laughs> ready to go into Gilpin and Fleming. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Ten seconds, nine seconds. Fleming into the triple threat, passes it down low to Black. Black kicks it out, best fires, no good. Black tries to save it in. Oh that was, the geometry of that shot was almost impossible and it still almost went down. And of course, our good friends, McHugh Law. McHugh Law, name you can trust, our audio sponsor. Here's the scoring for the first half, uh, Matt. Ty Ripley with two, Dalton Rice five, Luke Davidson nine, Andrew Fleming 11 for Oxford Hills, and for Hamden Academy, Nick Gilpin with two, uh, Jack Black with four, Brandon McIntyre with four, Matt Martin with two, Zach Gilpin with 15, and Isaiah Best with five. Davidson up top over to Ripley. Rice with it. Rice drives strong, drives up, gets stripped away, goes out of bounds. It's going to stay with Oxford Hills. Good hit he played there by uh, Rice. He almost tried to grab it, but would have knocked it out of bounds. He just kind of let it fall out. And Zach Gilpin showing, again, even more, more tricks of, in his bag. Able to hang defensively, reach in there, and not pick up a foul. Beauchene gets it inbounded to Fleming. Fleming being guarded by Bess. Out to Ripley. Back to Fleming. Fleming with a fastball to Davidson. Over to Ripley. Back to Rice. Rice picks up the dribble. Gets it to Beauchene. Beauchene has not dribbled yet. Now he does. Gets it to Rice. Oxford Hill's showing a lot of patience here. Well, I'm surprised we're not seeing more ball pressure from Hannum Academy. Beauchene for three, no good. Rebound, fought for, and Best comes out with it. And Matty Beauchene has to be careful with three personal fouls. And Luke Davidson draws the offensive foul. Why would there be any question on that call? Because we're in Hamden. Oh, Bob. that's a good reason. Yes. If we were in Oxford Hills the other way, it would have been the same thing. That's how that goes. If he camped out any longer, he'd need to get a permit. <laughs> He was set. Talk to your game warden. <laughs> he was set for about three days waiting to take that one. <laughs> he basically said if you come this way, it's going to be a play of control foul. Rice down low, uses the body, up and in, 32-29. And that's seven now for Rice, none in the first quarter, so settling down, getting into an, into an offensive flow. Letting the game come to him, not trying to bring it to the game. Scott. Elbow jumper, no good. Davidson with a good box out, but it was almost too good because it led McIntyre right into it. Meanwhile, Gilpin up and in. Zach Gilpin, 34-29. Yeah, see, it's those little things that separate teams in that second opportunity. It wasn't much we could do with the bad bounce on the rebound, but Hamden Academy took advantage and scored. Boshin almost lost it, picked it up, got it to Ripley. Rice with it now. Tries to cross around, Fleming. Has a screen going there. Doesn't get the ball. Now they kick it back up to Beauchene for the reset. Approaching six minutes remaining here in the third quarter. Over to Ripley. Ripley swings it in the corner for Davidson. Davidson down low for Rice. Rice lets it go out of bounds as McIntyre taps it out. 
Tap, tap, tappy tap. 5.58 remaining in the third quarter. Five point lead for Hamden Academy. 34 29. And you can see Hamden's going to make an adjustment, bring Matt Martin in, try to body up Rice. They're trying to post up Rice, which I like from Oxford Hill's position. Rice up top. Rice should look to take it off the dribble. Being guarded by Martin. Ripley to Beauchene. Beauchene gets it to Fleming. Fleming with a turnaround, up and in. 34-31. <laughs> he looks so unorthodox at times, but he has such great touch and uh, size that he was able to turn and spin. Got it down to three points, 34-31. 5.28 to play in the third. Meanwhile, Nick Gilpin shot there. No good, but you're going to get a foul called there on Davidson. No. Or on Martin, yeah. excuse me. Uh, I'm just used to saying foul on Luke Davidson all year. So well, it's been... It was a toss-up. I wasn't <laughs> sure. But good work by Luke on the board. He's got this thing down to three. We'll see how uh, Coach is going to bring the offense up high now. 1-4 high set. Trying to bring the defense up. Looking for some backdoor stuff. A low post. Fleming up top. Being guarded by Bess. Backdoor to Rice. Oh. Out of bounds. And that's exactly the play that Rice loves, that slashing play where a six foot four inch senior can use his athleticism, but let that one slip through his hands. That was a big play. Those are the types of plays right there that can make the difference. And they run the backdoor play. And Bess, good body control, goes up and draws the foul on Rice. Well, good thing Rice put a little body on because he was about ready to slam that one in. And as you know, no better way to get somebody into the game than a little slam dunkaroo. And I kind of like what the official did. He kind of waited to see. He was going to let it go if he made the basket. Instead, after he missed, you know, as he knew he was going to miss it, called the foul. First free throw is good. Second one is good, 36-31. Boshan gets it over the timeline, being guarded by Gilpin, spins in. Don't even think he realized how open he was. Light it up, no good. Back the other way comes Hamden Academy. Now they're on the run. Scott realizes he can just lay it right in. Nobody protected the basket. And it's going to be a timeout taken here by Oxford Hills. 38-31, Hamden Academy with a seven-point lead. But that's where Hamden is very difficult in transition. They, they pass, they're very unselfish, and as you saw, they push the ball up to up the court, then look for the, the ball reversal, and then Scott looked at the floor, saw the lane, and attacked the basket. 4.35 remaining in the third quarter, 38-31. Special presentation of Oxford Hills basketball on NPR Radio. Audio brought to you by McHugh Law in Hamden. McHugh Law, a name you can trust. Also brought to you by Berlin City Auto Group in Westbrook. Oxford Hills ball out of the timeout. Ripley picks up the dribble. In trouble, hands it off to Chickering. Chickering's in the corner, now gets it back to Ripley. Down low for Fleming, and it's tapped away. Martin saves it, and good block there by Rice. Great hustle that play. That was a clean block. And the official's like, no. <laughs> Yeah, I forget the name of this official down low, but he's a good young official. Good, good no call. Did a good job. Gilpin in the corner. Jumper is good. That's automatic, 40-31. to 31. Yeah, you can't let Zach Gilpin uh, take a good clear look at the basket because he will get, he will score. Rice almost loses it. Regains it, gets it back to Chickering. Chickering with the right hand, kicks it into the corner for Davidson. Davidson for another three, no good. I like the fact that we jammed the uh, rebounder. Bess in the corner, over to Gilpin, over to Martin. Martin in front of the Hamden Academy bench, swings it back to Bess. Bess dribbled in. Luke Davidson picks his pocket. And I don't know how you don't call a travel. I don't know either. In high school ball, when you hit the floor with the ball, it's usually a travel, but we'll take it. They'll call it on the other end on something silly off the ball that doesn't have anything to do with anything, Tom. You know how this works now. now. Fleming's getting really hit hard with no calls. Foul not called there. Shot doesn't go. They get it ahead to Martin. Travel. Martin kicks it to Bess. No good. Batted around. Kicked out. Gilpin. Pull up. No good. Rebound fought for, and Davidson comes down with it. 
I like the way Oxford Hills is competing. They have not shown any intimidation factor at all. Rice no good. Davidson follow no good. Rebound down to Nick Gilpin. No call there apparently. Fleming gets it back and lays it up at end 40 to 33. The phrase letting them play is right there because they're doing it on both ends, Tom. You really have to recognize it as a player and be strong. It's really about being strong. Not dirty, but physically strong. Playing basketball. And that's going to be on Fleming. That'll be his second. Got to reward Gilpin for going to the rack there. Yeah, good strong move. Had a little body contact. Good fundamental basketball play. That's how scorers score. 233 remaining in the third quarter, 40 to 33. Always a lot of talk about who's the best player in the state, and I would put Zach right at the top of my list. I would put Zach at the top of my list. I'm old fashioned though. Sometimes people will look at situations and think because this player has a scholarship offer and this one doesn't, that this player is better, which I can understand. You know, someone can come to that logical conclusion, but it's not always the case. There are a lot of factors involved with scholarship opportunities. It's like baseball. Not always, not, uh, the best free agents don't always go first, Tom. Sometimes it's a little bit different. Sometimes there's a fit and they go somewhere else. Gilpin hits both free throws, 42-33. Made that look easy. As easy as Berlin City Auto Group off exit 48 in Westbrook. Again, want to thank the fine sponsors here as well for the audio stream. McHugh Law, McHugh Law, a name you can trust. Hope to see Christian McHugh back on the court soon in McGill University. Been battling injury, I guess, all year. So. Yeah, it looks like they're going to redshirt him this year, uh, dealing with some back issues. And I happened to talk to Kyle McHugh today, and he was going up to visit. So hopefully they're listening and watching up there and. In old Canada. Up in Montreal. Hey, we had a lot of fun as Christian was uh, missed the basketball. Tom, I really, we logged a lot of miles following Christian McHugh around the state. <laughs> <laughs> well, we had, if Dad had his way, we'd be right up there in Canada. <laughs> Maybe next year we'll go up. Maybe next year. Well, people starting to get into it here a little bit, Maddie. It's a crowd. good crowd on both sides. The Oxford Hills contingent made quite a good trek as well. And for those of you who didn't, I'm glad to see you here. Well, I don't actually see you, but I'm just going to assume you're listening to me. Out of the timeout, Oxford Hills basketball. Bo Shane, Fleming, Davidson, Chickering, and Morton for Oxford Hills. Black, Bess, Scott, Martin, and Gilpin for Hamden Academy. Morton's three-pointer, no good. Gilpin saves it, but it goes out of bounds off of Chickering into the Oxford Hills bench. Good hustle all around both sides. Just can't get that extra break that Oxford Hills needs to get into this and over the hump. Can't get that three-pointer to break that ice. And this starts to get into that dangerous territory where you wonder if Hamden Academy starts to pull away. Ball stripped away from Gilpin as he went up on Fleming. Boshin gets it over the timeline, picks up his dribble, gets it over to Chickering. We had it down to three. It's back up to nine. Boshane drives into the lane. In trouble. And Morton's going to draw the blocking foul on Martin. I've never quite understood game to game how, like, flying body tackles or whatever elicit no calls, but then they call the block on the floor. Never understood it. Yeah, it's very difficult uh, to figure out do you like to think they're applying the advantage-disadvantage uh, philosophy to, to the calls, which I'm a big fan of? Not sure there was a big disadvantage on that call. <laughs> Boshane into the corner for Chickering. Spots up for three. Bang! Firecracker three. 42-36. <laughs> that was the fireball. Fireball. <laughs> Which is like the money ball in the NBA three-point contest. I like to add lib on all these words, you noticed. Bess with the three-pointer, no good. Rice and Davidson fighting for the rebound. Davidson rips it away. Minute remaining in the third quarter. Oxford Hills has to finish this one strong. I don't want to be that guy, but if you don't have an easy shot here, oh no. Here comes Bess. Puts it down. That should have been a tee for taunting after. You can't steer down a player like that. I mean, I don't really care, but you go by the rule books, and that's, uh, <laughs> and that's, uh, you know, taunting is a technical. 
I have no problem with the play, and that was a great hammer by Isaiah Bass. Boshane pulls up in the lane, raindrop in, 44 to 38. Yeah, tempo picking up a little bit now. Back and forth we go. Got to finish this quarter strong, though. You don't want to give up another thunderous dunk. Stepped out of bounds. Nope, they're going to call the foul on Rice on the floor. Thirty-two point six seconds remaining in the third quarter. Forty-four thirty-eight. Oxford Hills trails by six. Fleming coming back into the ball game. Good decision. He shouldn't be sitting at all or very long. And coach, <laughs> coach got him in and out in probably 30 seconds. Gave him a, about a minute. Gave him a break. Rice has been jawing with Besson Gilpin the entire game. Illegal screen. That is going to be an illegal screen. Isaiah Bess is like, I was like this. Official's like, no, no, you weren't. You I, did like, I, I did like the initial reenactment there by, yeah, by Mr. Bess. That was good. I like that. That's like instant replay in slow motion. As we talked about, they're all great kids on both teams, and you can see them smiling, having a good time out there, even though they're competing, and it means an awful lot out there. And that's what it's all about. 44-38, 25 seconds remaining in the third quarter. If you're Oxford Hills, you'd really like to get a score here, preferably at the buzzer so that Hammond Academy can't come back. Fleming can't find the ball, and it's on the floor. Possession arrow favors Hamden Academy. And you know how I feel about Biggs putting it on the floor, Tom. Well, you, especially you get double and triple team and you put the ball down on the floor, they all dive in, and that's a classic example of what happens. The minute you put that ball down, they're all on it. If you put your sandwich on the ground, the ants are going to eat it. <laughs> if you put it up by your mouth, they're not going to climb up your arm. <laughs> that's how it works. <laughs> and that is the rest <laughs> of the story. And that's Hoops Tips with Matty Boutwell. Oh, God. Almost 10 seconds remaining here in the third quarter. Gilpin on Ripley. This ought to be a heck of a matchup. Now he's going to kick it over to Scott. Scott on Morton. Five seconds, four seconds, three seconds. And they're going to get Morton on the floor for the push. Not a bad foul, really. Well, he got one to give. Keeps him away from the free throw line and to the basket. Got to get a stop here. 2.7 seconds remaining. Yeah, you do not want to go. You don't want to end this quarter with a, a buzzer beater from anybody. Fleming and Morton did a good job there converging on the ball, knocking it out. Yeah, that was quite a sandwich. That was, no call. Isaiah Best got squeezed pretty good trying to get to the ball. They get it inbound. Martin for three, no good. End of three quarters of play, and it's a six-point lead for Hamden Academy. And our audio sponsor today, McHugh Law. McHugh Law, name you can trust right here in Hamden. We are on the road. Maddie Beltwell, Tom Nolette, Joe Carpini from DVM Sports and on-demand sporting events. Pass down low. Fleming to Davidson up and in 44-40. Deficit back down to four for the Vikings. And that's what good players can do. They were trying to come out and double on him, and he made the great pass inside to Davidson. Oxford Hills always makes it interesting, that's for sure. They drive into the lane. You're going to get a foul called. Be interested to see where that one was and who they give that to. I'm going to guess on Ripley. Uh, they're looking at Beauchene. Yep. Oh, my goodness. They, sometimes it's just not your day, and today is not Maddie's day. And, of course, Coach Graham on the bench. Just Well, there have been so few fouls called. How can one player, <laughs> the point guard at that? That's how it goes. Hell yeah, it is how it goes. Sometimes you just at a traffic light and you get run into. Somehow it's your fault. 47 to 40, 730 remaining in the fourth quarter. Boshan's going to stay in there with the four fouls. Boshan with the ball now, being guarded by Nick Gilpin. Fleming, turn around, around the rim and out. Tough shot, tough angle, but almost got it to fall. Maddie's got to be careful. Martin down low, gets his miss, 49-40. And now Coach Graffin wants to take a timeout. 7.06 remaining in the fourth quarter. Hamden Academy had their deficit down to five. It is now back up to nine. Oxford Hill is going to take a full timeout here with 7.06 remaining in the fourth quarter, up 49 to 40. And on that play, Matt Boshane with four fouls, unable to really help. 
So now Andrew Fleming's comes back, makes one swap, but then he has to recover and try to make another block. By that time, Matt Martin already had the rebound and put back. So that fourth foul does does have an impact on the game. We really can't lose Maddie down the home stretch here. Nope. I couldn't agree with that more. Chickering and Beauchene into the ball game. Out of the timeout. Ripley, Fleming, Davidson in there. Round out Oxford Hills. For Hamden Academy, Scott, Gilpin, Gilpin, Martin, and Bess. Beauchene drives in. Fleming gets the hoop and the harm. What a great follow. Good move by Beauchene's, and Fleming timed it, got the rebound, and put back in the foul. 49-42, seven-point lead now for Hamden Academy. Fleming goes to the line to shoot the end one. Dalton Rice coming into the ball game. Ben Morton also coming into the ball game. Davidson's going to come out. Beauchene's going to come out. That'll save him for a little while, at least. Morton, Chickering, Fleming, Rice, and Ripley. And Nick Gilpin coming out of the ball game. Jake Black will be coming in. Not to be confused with Jack Black, although that possibly a relation? I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> Fleming's free throw is good, 49-43. That gives uh, Andrew 18 for the game. 21 for Zach Gilpin for, uh, for uh, Hamden Academy. Black with it. Over to Martin. Martin's going to drive in. Off the glass and in. That was an aggressive move from Matt Martin. 51-43. Strong move. Use that physica physicality. Was able to create space and get to the basket. Ripley down low. Fleming turn around. Off the glass and in. 51-45. Andrew's down the field. And guess what? Feed the machine. <laughs> Feed the phlegm. <laughs> Into the corner, Gilpin, three, no good. Ball batted around. It's going to be off Hamden Academy, out of bounds, into the Hamden Academy bench. Oxford Hills basketball, 6-7 remaining in the fourth quarter. 51-45, Hamden Academy with the lead. Oxford Hills hasn't had the lead, I think, since it was 9-8 to eight in the first quarter, but definitely doing well. Rice, three-pointer, no good. Best with it, ball kicked around, and Chickering's going to come up with it. That's why Isaiah Best loves to get into the transition game. Certainly good at it, that's for sure. Morton waiting to work around a screen from Rice. Rice will take a couple of dribbles, gets it to Fleming. Fleming being guarded by Gilpin. Fade away. And I'm not sure where that was. Must have been there. That's a tough one for Mr. Gilpin, that's for sure. I've been looking at this official up the mid-court trying to remember who he is, and I know him, and uh, I think that's John Hayes, who was a terrific basketball coach. Spent a lot of time at UMF with Coach Meter, and then moved on elsewhere, and now he's back in Maine, but I believe he's done a terrific job up there. Fleming's free throw is good, 51-46. Five thirty-seven remaining in the fourth quarter. Second free throw too strong. Rebound down to Gilpin. Of the Zach variety, by the way. <laughs> Have to specify. Gilpin's going to go down low. Look like he, sl it looks he slipped. slipped. We got fouled before the slip even happened. <laughs> Foul's going to be called on Ripley. Six fouls on each team. I'm really surprised they don't have any volunteer kids that want to go out there and wipe <laughs> up the court, you know, like they do in tennis. Well, especially in this community, they have a huge uh, youth basketball program here. Looks like Hamden Academy is going to take a timeout. We will also take a quick timeout here for just a second. It's 527 remaining in the fourth quarter. Oxford Hills coming up here today to uh, prove that they've got what it takes to uh, go far when it comes to Augusta. And right now, trailing by five against Hamden Academy, 51-46. Hamden Academy looking to make it win number 38. It's an important game for Oxford Hills as you start looking ahead to uh, postseason. You really want to finish strong and start to get in your stride and have the confidence that you can compete with the best teams in the state. I think this shows it quite well that we can. Uh, you know, kids are playing at a high level of confidence, just competing and playing. That's a really good sign. 
for Oxford Hills. Denver Academy ball out of the timeout. Gilpin up in. That block's going to get called on Checkering. And uh, the official thought about it, I think he was right. I think Chickering yep. was way too deep under the basket and kind of fell while he was well, while Gilpin was going Gilpin was going up. Yeah. Coach Kraft from just yelled, I can't wait to see the tape. <laughs> 52-46, Gilpin makes the first free throw. <laughs> you never know. You never know what you're going to hear, right? I uh, love that stuff. That's 22 for Zach. Make it 23. 23. You're going to put Zach Gelpin on the line, you're going to pay for it. 53-46. 21 for uh, Andrew Fleming as the big dogs are producing well for both teams here today. Price to Chickering. Chickering around a couple of screens down low. Off the class and in. Riley Chickering. 53-48. We know he's a competitor, and now he's had a lot more confidence the last several games and showing it today. It's a bulldog. Five minutes remaining in the fourth quarter. Martin being guarded by Chickering. Morton falls down. No call. Scott for three. No good. Rebound. Davidson. Foul's going to get called on Martin for over the back. And that will put us on the line shooting one and one the rest of the way, or bonus the rest of the way. Both teams in the bonus. One and one bonus. I think now, you know, we'll see it tighten up a little bit by the officials, which is not, which is fairly typical as the game reaches the latter stages. Boshane's going to come back into the ball game. Four fouls for Boshane. I like Coach Grafham's uh, rotation today. He hasn't left a big three in all the time. He's been rotating one out quite often, which has kept, uh, kept a good rotation, giving rest, and getting other players in. Going eight deep today. Davidson's free throw is no good. On the front end of a one and one is huge. Which is a killer. Martin with a rebound. Bass has the baseline. Rice cuts him off. Back up top to Nick Gilpin. Looking to get it to Scott. Scott in the paint. Kicks it out to Zach Gilpin. Gilpin between the legs. In the middle. And Fleming got caught reaching. Bucket's good. And the foul. Coach Graff is saying, if you're going to call the foul up high, that was on the floor. How many steps of continuation do you give? That's what Coach Graff is asking. <laughs> and the answer is, as many as you need. <laughs> as many as you need. <laughs> I love fans that yell the coaches to shut up. That's a beautiful thing. That's always good. Free throws good. 57-48 now. 56-48. Excuse me. Eight point lead now for Hamden Academy. And you have to be careful. The Oxford Hills. You don't want to get lulled. And that's what Hamden's doing right now. They're lulling them. Rice had it down low. Didn't like his position. Now kicks it back out. Checkering now up top to Boshane. Down low. Davidson. Hook shot, turnaround, no good. Martin with another strong rebound. Trapped on the baseline. And Rice had his hand on the ball. What so are they they're going to call it on Hamden Academy. It's going to be Hamden Academy ball. When Rice went out of bounds, touched the ball. Kind of an interesting call there. It was interesting that Rice went out of bounds to touch it, and then uh, they turned it over. Sanborn's going to come into the ball game now for Davidson. Davidson with three fouls. I don't know if this is a situation where they're going to start using some fouls or... Uh well, the officials are going to use some up. <laughs> That's for sure. Bess up top to Scott. Scott swings it over to Martin into the corner for Bess. Bess and Rice. And right, they're trying to get the ball inside to Gilpin. Fleming reaches around, slaps it out of bounds into the Hamden Academy cheerleaders. 3.55 remaining in the fourth quarter. 56-48 Hamden Academy. Take a look at uh, Fleming and Gilpin battling, both about the same size. Fleming may be a little bit tall, a little bit longer. I want to say Gilpin's probably a little bit more at the rugged point, though. Yes. You can tell he's a couple years older. That looked like a carry. Shots no good. Batted around. And a foul there. I think that's going to be on Rice. Well, good hustle play by Hamden Academy. Gets it a loose ball, that tap out, and then another bite at the apple is always detrimental to the Oxford Hills team, giving the opponent multiple opportunities. Got to limit turnovers and limit opportunities for the opponent. Nick Gilpin's free throw is good, 57-48. Nick Skint been a little quiet offensively. That's his sixth point for the game. And then make it a seventh. 3.40 remaining in the fourth quarter. 
And this way you don't you know you don't want to be satisfied that you've played well to this point. You want to finish strong. Absolutely. Take this down to the wire. Beauchene lays it up, lays it in. Well, speaking about lulling people, Maddie does that sometimes. They think he's just going to pass the ball, and then he'll explode to the basket. That's his second time this half he's done that. Gilpin. Over to Scott. Martin down low for Zach Gilpin on the baseline. Turn around. No good. Fleming with a rebound. Great job by Andrew, and he's being chased down by the pack of Broncos. Fleming down low to Sanborn. Fouled by Gilpin. And that time, Sanborn did get knocked, but really it was because he was off balance and Nick's a little bit stronger, but we'll take it and send Sanborn to the line. A little bit stronger. Sanborn went down pretty fast and hard. <laughs> Sanborn was like a shot. I mean, he was jumping all over the place as soon as Nick, uh, as soon as Zach, like, bumped right into him. Still shooting the uh, one and one. First free throw is good, 58-51. And that gets uh, Dennis Sanborn on the... Stat sheet, six foot two inch senior. He's been playing a great role for this squad this year. Can't hit both of them. Balls on the floor. Sanborn with it, picks it up and cleans the house. 58 53. Speak about playing a role. When people accept their role and do what it takes, good things happen. And Coach Grafham is fired up. You see him, he just gave the old fist pump on the base, on the bench. That's going to be on Fleming. That'll be a block. Sanborn's got blood on his hands or something. He's going to the official going. <laughs> Four fouls now on Fleming. Fleming's going to have to be careful. <laughs> Sanborn. Sanborn was going to shake hands with, uh, tap hands with Davis to come on the way out. Davis is like, I'm not touching you. You got blood. I won't be able to go in if I get <laughs> Oh, goodness. Too bad Sanborn, Sanborn was giving us some good minutes here. Gilpin's first free throw is good, 59-53. Zach is 6 of 6 from the free throw line in this game. Gilpin's second free throw is good, 60-53. 28 now. He had the 30 the other night and 19 rebounds against Meselonski. Beauchene pull up. Around the rim and out. Good shot, good selection. Just rattled in and rattled out. 2.30 remaining in the fourth quarter. Best swings it over to Gilpin. Gilpin drives in. Fleming blocks a shot. Fans want a foul. They didn't get it. Yeah, and he's a little, little bit out of control that time. He's lucky he didn't uh, turn it over. I didn't see someone from the weak side, Oxford Hill, step up. When he puts his head down a little bit on that move, that's when you can pick up that player control foul. Davidson has three fouls. He can still do the stop there. Chickering there. Clear Offensive is foul. Yeah. It's there all the time. Zach, you know, is aggressive to the basket. A lot of times in Maine high school ball, a lot of players won't step in. One thing Oxford Hills has done very well this season is step up and take that player can take that contact on the player control. 60 to 53. It does help that Chickering doesn't have four fouls there either. I'm not sure uh, Plumbing could have done the same thing there, but or Beauchene for that matter. Plumbing and Beauchene both have four fouls for Oxford Hills. Approaching two minutes remaining in the fourth quarter, 60 to 53. Him Academy with the lead. Fleming down low, Rice up nice. and in. Again, uh, the, the pressure comes to Fleming and he hits the cutting Rice for the layup. Nine now for Rice. Bass up, no good. Scott cleans it up, can't finish. Rice with a rebound. Fleming with a huge intimidation swat. Created all that action and made the ball available for Oxford Hills. Coach Grafham like a timeout. The Vikings are bringing the plunder. <laughs> Hamden Academy up by five, 60 to 55. Oxford Hills will not go away. Again, I want to thank the fine sponsors who brought this game to you today here on MBR Radio and MBR.org. And McHugh Law. McHugh Law, a name you can trust. They are sponsoring our audio portion of the broadcast today. We could have just brought a camera up here, but we thought maybe you'd want to hear us talk. Maybe some of you don't, and I can understand that too. But <laughs> McHugh Law, a name you can trust, our audio sponsor here on MBR Radio. Well, you know, part of our goal is to think things as easy as possible. Absolutely. Absolutely. 
Out of the timeout. Going to be interesting to see what Coach Graff has out of the timeout. Minute 38 remaining in the fourth quarter, and this has been a dandy on a Saturday afternoon in Hamden Academy. It's good? Yeah. Well, here's the funny thing, right? How many blood spots do you think there are from there down to this end where he was <laughs> eventually said, he eventually said, I have to go out because I have blood. Not, you know, not, not, you know, the side of anything, but. Oh, boy. Now, here's always a difficult pass, Matt, I think, trying to get the ball in on that timeout and the side out. But they're going to let him inbound it easily, so that's. Pass out of the timeout. Davidson looked to get it down over the Fleming, and that is not what Coach Graff wanted out of the timeout. Zach Gilpin knew that was coming. At the last minute, gave just a little hit check to Fleming, knocked him off the block. It was a very smart move. Nothing egregious, just smart basketball. Good basketball. Andrew has to be careful not to reach here. Can't make much of a difference if you're on the bench with your fifth foul. The Bess tip. and Rice. No, Downloading it, Gilpin. Well, we're going to see Hamden look to pull it out. Davidson's going to foul Martin. Nice, just a clean, hard foul. Well, that was a tremendous shot fake by Matt Martin. Got Davidson up in the air for a year. The FAA actually called and wanted Davidson to come down. <laughs> he did. Fortunately, he came down on Matt Martin. Free throws good, 61-55. That's seven now for Martin for the game. He can throw a pretty good fastball himself, can he? Yes, he can. Very good baseball player. Around the rim and in. And that's pretty much been the difference today. There's been three or four of those that have rattled in and out for Oxford Hills. Him and Academy, they rattle out and they go in. Well, Fleming? Free, oh, go ahead. No, I was going to say, free throws have been big second half for, for uh, him and Academy. Rice needs to be careful. He's going to call timeout. He had so that's a pretty big discrepancy when you're talking about a tight game. Absolutely, especially with even fouls. Beauchene inbounds to Fleming. Fleming, elbow jumper, good! He can do that move in his sleep. Probably that, does. Because he kind of has a time where he's going to catch and spin and shoot. Rice needs to be the one to foul here. Chickering picks it off! Head to Rice! Rice gets it, can't get it to go! Foul's going to be called on Rice. And Rice was right there for the putback and just couldn't quite get the balance when he got the ball. Well, one thing you'll find out quick, Dalton Rice isn't going to back down from anyone. <laughs> to the point where Fleming has had to body tackle him to get him out of situations <laughs> at times before. I mean, he's 6'4", but he's kind of wiry. He doesn't look like he'd be a big tough kid, but he is a competitive guy I would not want to mess with. Let's watch the baseball hit his arm, and he broke the baseball. Well, that was a huge play with the miss and the foul and the rebounding action. It's a big swing. Still a two-possession game, though. This free throw make it a three-possession game, though. And it does. 64-57, Zach Gilpin, ice cold. Blood running through the veins at the free throw line. Yeah, he's been very impressive. Fleming, no good. Chickering saves it. Gets it to Beauchene. Davidson, three-pointer, no good. Fouls a shot. Drives up, no good. Foul is called. It's going to be on Scott. 17.3 seconds remaining. Both teams now in the double bonus. Luke Davidson goes to the line. Fox of the Hills, you want to make these two. And then immediately trap and foul. I, I like to try to trap. At this point, you want to try to get a steal if you can, but it has to be quick. Free throw too strong. And that's been the difference here in the in the second half, really Tom. Has, it really has been. And it's it. not a situation of foul calls because nope. it's been even on both sides. It's a, mission. it's a difference between making them and missing them. Second free throw is good, 64-58, back to a two-possession game. And Ripley's going to foul Nick Gilpin. Now, foul in the fourth quarter. It depends which rule book you listen to or read. Gilpin's first free throw is good, 65-58, and he owned an academy. That's 12 of 12 from the free throw line in the fourth quarter. And that's what championship teams do. 16 of 16 in the second half from the free throw line. And I know you tried to jinx it there to do the 16 for 60. Didn't work. 66-58. No. Boshin kicks it out. Davidson, three-pointer. No good. Ball batted around. Handerman Academy falling all over the floor there. Someone caught some water. It went hard down hard, Jack. That was Gilpin. Gilpin showing all the hustle. 
And that's why, for my money, pound for pound right now, I'm putting Zach Gelpin on my number one list because yeah. he's going to do that with an eight-point lead with 6.9 seconds remaining in the fourth quarter to try and save that possession. Yeah, I'm not sure how he didn't get nominated for, uh, you know, All-American McDonald's. Boshin fadeaway, no good. Rebound fought for. Rebound's going to come down to Nick Gilpin. And Oxford Hills gave the Hamden Academy Broncos all they could handle, but the Broncos finally bucked off the Vikings. 66-58. Your final here. I'll let Tom uh, do up the old Point scoring goals. update. Again, want to thank the fine sponsors today, Berlin City Auto Group. They make it easy. Hopefully you found it easy to watch this game or listen to this game wherever you might be. And you had a great Saturday afternoon watching some very competitive high school hoops. And there's a very good feeling these two teams may meet again at some point. And if they do, we'll be there. That's how it goes. I also want to thank McHugh Law. McHugh Law, a name you can trust. Good-looking shot, squared up, 15-footer. Right there, Nick Gilpin showing why he's one of the super softs, up and in with a left hand. Last year against Lawrence to get him to get, the finals. Get to Fleming in the high post. Davidson in the corner, three, splash! And now Bess with it, being guarded by Rice. That's a tough one. Bess around, up and in. Swings it to Ripley. Ripley into the paint. Pull up, up and good. More. Boshin kicks it out, Davidson. Davidson fires away, bang! Free throw, no good. Rebound, Davidson. Good box out from Davidson on Gilpin. That is not an easy task either. Fleming jumper. Starting to feel it. Big red, 24-21. Bass picks it away from Fleming. Checkering needs to stop. And Bass puts it down. But you got to end this strong or it doesn't matter. Fleming down low, finishes. Pushing gets it to Fleming. Fleming with a turnaround, up and in. <laughs> Scott realizes he can just lay it right in. Nobody protected the basket. Best dribbled in. Luke Davidson picks his pocket. <laughs> Beauchene into the corner for Chickering. Spots up for three. Bang. I don't want to be that guy, but if you don't have an easy shot here. Oh, no. Here comes Bess. Puts it down. That should have been Boshane pulls up in the lane, raindrop in, 44 to 38. We are on the road, Maddie Beltwell, Tom Nolet, Joe Carpini from DVM Sports and On Demand Sporting Events. Pass down low, Fleming to Davidson, up and in, 44 to 40. Oxford Hills always makes it interesting, that's for sure. They drive into the lane, you're gonna get a foul called. Be interested to see where that one was and who they give that to. Ripley down low, Fleming turn around, off the glass and in. Rice to Chickering, Chickering around a couple of screens down low, off the glass and in, Riley Chickering. Gelpin between the legs, in the middle, and Fleming got caught reaching. Bucket's good, and the foul. Absolutely. Take this down to the wire, Beauchene lays it up, lays it in. He's been playing a great role for this squad this year. Can't hit both of them, ball's on the floor. Sanborn with it, picks it up and cleans the house, 58-53. Fleming down low, Rice up nice. and in. Fleming, elbow jumper, good. Rebound fought for, rebound's gonna come down to Nick Gilpin. And Oxford Hills gave the Hamden Academy Broncos all they could handle, but the Broncos finally bucked off the Vikings. 66-58, your final here.
Never lose your memories to deteriorating VHS tapes by having digital video magic convert them to DVD today. I am so glad I went to Digital Video Magic and had all of my VHS tapes converted to DVD. Preserve your memories forever. Call Digital Video Magic now before it's too late. All aboard MBR.org! The place to get all your high school and amateur sports news and information. MBR.org is in high gear with Maine High School Winter Sports. Go to MBR.org to chat about your favorite team. Find the latest articles, travel news, and cancellations. Or visit their all new and very popular team pages. MBR.org has everything you want to know about high school and amateur sports in Maine. Coming in February, all the high school tournament action at your fingertips 24 7. It's high school sports heaven. All aboard MBR.org! Thank you.